we will look to uh, Representative Sensor Mura that's bringing our first bill forward, which is House File 1502. Um, we have allocated approximately half an hour for this for this bill. Um, so Representative, uh, Representative Mura Sensor, uh, welcome to the committee. And uh, if you would, uh, uh, well, I'll let that? you introduce yourself, but I'll first of all offer to uh, bring your bill before us. Uh, for consideration. So I will move, uh, actually, I think we're going to have Representative Frazier do that because you are one of the co-authors of this bill. All right, Representative Frazier, would you like to motion House File 1502 before the committee to be re-referred to, to the Education Finance Committee? I would, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Frazier. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, and so now we will, uh, we, I believe, uh, Senator Mary, that you, Representative Senator Mary, that you do have an amendment um, to get the bill in the, uh, in the shape that you would like it to be discussed today. Um, and uh, I, I will move the amendment to be before us right now. And again, uh, members, this is an author's amendment, um, and it's the way that the bill should be discussed today. So if that's all right, uh, I will move the author's amendment, which yeah, is the A1 uh, Chair Pryor, I can briefly describe the amendment, if that's okay. okay with you. Please proceed then. Um, so and, the A1 and, amendment gets the bill in, in the shape that I would like it. Um, it's mainly clarifying things. It is uh, clarifying some of the language about the graduation requirement portion of the bill, clarifying that the 0.5 credit for ethnic studies can fall into social studies, art, English, science, or elective. Um, additionally, uh, there is a section of the bill that discusses ethnic studies courses focused on specific ethnicities, um, and it adds Karen as to um, Hmong and Somali courses. Um, it also changes some, uh, just a few things about the ethnic studies working group. It adds administrators to that group, which we thought was a pretty um, key group. It also uh, recognizes that generally elementary and middle school teachers are generalists um, rather than specifically ethnic studies teachers. Um, and it also just clarifies some of the language uh, under the school needs assessment portion. We're asking school districts to gather feedback um, from their community about uh, what their ethnic studies courses should be. And we just wanted to make sure that that language was uh, as broad as possible to give districts flexibility in how they do that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Representative Sensenmuir. All right. Um, any discussion or question on the amendment that, uh, that we have before us right now, the A1? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So we now have the bill before us as amended with the A1 amendment. All right. Um, Representative Sensor Muir, um, if you are prepared, uh, yes. please inter introduce yourself to the committee and introduce your bill. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Samantha Sensomura. I'm a representative from South Minneapolis, District 64A, or 63A. Um, I come before you today to represent House File 1502, a bill for ethnic studies for all Minnesota students. This is not the first time that this bill has been introduced, and I want to give credit to Representative Fu Lee and Representative Cedric Frazier before me who have worked with advocates, including the Ethnic Studies Coalition, on pushing this important legislation forward. The Ethnic Studies for All legislation offers the opportunity to bridge the ethnic and cultural divide in Minnesota classrooms by incorporating ethnic studies instruction for all students. The Ethnic Studies for All legislation would do three things. First, it would embed ethnic studies in all K-12 schools, starting with a graduation requirement for high school students. Second, it would create an ethnic studies advisory working group composed of a diverse array of educators, students, and community experts to advise MDE on ethnic studies content and standards. And third, it would provide support and aid to local school districts in the development and implementation of ethnic studies curriculum tailored to their community's needs and interests. I want to start with a personal experience that explains why I am so invested in this bill and in this work. In ninth grade, I was in a world studies class in Minneapolis public schools. It was the end of the year, and I was frustrated that we had spent our entire time in this class focused on the continent and the countries of Europe. I stayed after class to ask the teacher when we might learn about other countries, continents, or cultures. And the teacher told me that I could learn about that when I got to college. Mm -hmm. That experience has stayed with me. I did get a chance to go on to college and take ethnic studies courses. But I know that many of my classmates, students of color, did not have that opportunity. And I believe that one of the reasons we lose students of color within our school system 
is due to disengagement that comes when you don't see yourself reflected, when you don't see your history, your culture, your people valued or taught. There's a metaphor that is popular in education that says the best education should offer students mirrors and windows. Mirrors to be able to see themselves, to learn their histories, to learn their stories, to see themselves reflected in the curriculum, and windows to be able to understand other experiences, other cultures. Currently, so much of our curriculum in Minnesota is lacking those windows and mirrors, and Netflix Studies is an opportunity to start changing that. Students from across the state are asking for this course. Yesterday at the Capitol, we had hundreds of students rallying in the rotunda, and they were from all over our state, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Worthington, Shakopee. Over 30 districts across our state already offer ethnic studies courses or courses that would meet an ethnic studies requirement. Um, courses such as Native American Studies in the Lower Port School District that Representative Knudsen represents, Diversity in America in the Eden Valley Watkins School District that Representative Erdahl represents, uh, and Hmong and Somali, Somali Studies in Minneapolis, the district I represent. Students of all racial and ethnic identities benefit from ethnic studies. Today's students are growing up in a more globalized and interconnected world. Ethnic studies invite students to more deeply explore the many diverse cultures and identities within our state and country, and in doing so, students gain a better understanding of themselves and their classmates. Ethnic studies equip students with the knowledge and perspectives to live and lead in a more diverse, globalized, and interconnected world. Um, I just want to end with kind of talking about the approach to this bill, um, because I think we're going to have a, a more broad you know, or you all are going to have a more broad discussion today just kind of about, um, you know, graduation requirements and kind of what it may mean to change those for students in Minnesota. Um, you know, and I want to say that um, as the author uh, of this piece of legislation, I, wa I really want to say that we're not taking it like lightly to add a graduation requirement. Um, we do, you know, understand some of the constraints that that could add on students, that could add on a school district. And so, we are trying to be as thoughtful as possible, but we also know, you know, and I had a, had a good conversation with Representative Erdahl today about this, that making something a graduation requirement is, is really the only way we can ensure that all students have access to that kind of course. Um, and so we, with this bill and with the language that has been updated from previous years, you know, we are trying to give as much flexibility to districts as possible and kind of where they put this class, how they can, you know, pair it with other offerings. Um, but we know that every student in Minnesota would benefit from ethnic studies, um, and that's why we chose the approach that we did. Um, so thank you. I look forward to continuing this discussion, um, and I would now like to yield the rest of my time to my testifiers. Thank you, Representative Sensor-Mura. The first testifier that I have on my list is Veronica Are excuse me, Arellano, Arellano. Uh, please introduce yourself again and proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. I am Veronica Ariano Martinez. I am a second year student at Augsburg University and I graduated from Harding High School. I am in support of Ethnic Studies for All Bill, HF 1502. I support Ethnic Studies because I have experienced the positive influence it has on one's life. Ethnic Studies has helped me to understand <laughs> the systems in our society and to think critically about them. I feel more comfortable in my own skin and confident enough to articulate myself and voice my opinions. Ethnic Studies has helped me to learn about the people around me and in my community. In my college Ethnic Studies courses, I have worked with a diverse array of students. These classes and the conversations experience has helped us and my peers learn about one another, realize our commonalities, and connect to each other on a deeper level. Despite all racial and ethnic differences, we grew closer as a class and as a community. At my high school, I was a part of a mixed demographic of students, most of us not being white. The issue that we faced was that our education did not reflect us. Unlike Augsburg, there wasn't a space for students like me to build their own identities. I did not get to learn about my history or my culture. I did not learn about myself as a Mexican American or where I fit in society. I did not feel as prepared for the conversations I would have later in college. I strongly believe that if our education was more inclusive, if we had ethnic studies in our K through 12 schools, students like me would gain a better understanding of their own identity, feel more connected to their community, and be interested in pursuing a higher education. Thank you for your time. I urge you all to vote yes to HF 1502, Ethnic Studies for All Bill. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony and being with us today. I appreciate it. Uh, we have our next testifier is remote. Uh, 
um, Jocelyn Thapmantri, if you can hear us, uh, please unmute yourself and identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Excellent. Well, we can see that you're coming on. Um, uh, hello, my name is Jocelyn Marie Tabachi. I'm a sixth grader. I'm a sixth grade student from Worthington Middle School. I am also a young organizer at Worthington, Minnesota with Unidos, Minnesota. When I think about what we have learned at school, what I remember hearing is how Abraham Lincoln freed the slave states and their capitals, but think I'm gold and other people have changed the world, but none of them look like me. The only time I feel somewhat represented was when I was told about slavery for a few days and Martin Luther King on the Friday before MLK Day. We feel like celebrating people of color, celebrating people of color one month a year is enough to share and learn from their struggles, their inventions, their greatness. We should be learning about the impacts that they had throughout the year. I haven't felt represented in a long time and I want to know that my people are important to society. In school, we talk about how Columbus discovered America as if people did not live here already. We completely erase those who were here in Minnesota and in the country before us. Fifth through eighth grade is a time where we try to figure out where we are and where we fit in. Ethnic studies in our school would let us and our friends see that our community of color did more than just suffer and wait to be saved. I want others to learn how my Hispanic and Asian community impacted the state and country, how we are artists, architects, engineers, writers, and so much more made a change for the state. I need to learn and see myself in books more, more than just the week during Hispanic Heritage Month, Asian American or Pacific Islander Month, and Black History Month. That's why we stand here today representing youth from Greater Minnesota in support of the Ethnic Studies Bill. Thank you all to vote, yeah. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciated hearing about your experience and, and uh, very impressive. All right, um, I believe that we will now go to our in-person testifier again, uh, Dr. Brian Losinski. And please identify yourself and proceed. Sure, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you to everyone on the committee for uh, hearing our testimony. Um, my name is Brian Lozenski. I'm a professor of urban and multicultural education at McAllister College, uh, and I'm, I'm also a parent of three children who are at, in Minnesota schools. Uh, this morning, I spent, uh, I spent the morning at my daughter's school, elementary school, uh, doing a lesson for Black History Month, and uh, I know plenty of other parents have been in the same boat. And while this may sound like a, like a cute anecdote, I actually think it's more indicative of the problem that the Ethnic Studies for All bill seeks to address. Uh, and that is the, you know, this supplementing of our children's education by farming out the responsibility to sympathetic parents who are, you know, coming in to be able to do this work. Uh, this is not a sustainable model for engaging in Ethnic Studies based education in our schools. Um, I come here with the question, what does it mean to prepare Minnesota students for post-secondary education and to participate in a, a broader and globalized world? Uh, there are currently little expectations and absolutely no assurances that Minnesota students will graduate with the intra and intercultural knowledge frameworks that Representative Sensomira talked about as mirrors and windows. Um, we leave it to the hands typically of social studies educators, <clears throat> but this is not sufficient. Uh, ethnic studies disciplines were created specifically because of the superficial and marginal approaches um, to, community, to the histories and knowledge of communities of color that have defined the disciplines of history, sociology, anthropology, geography, and many of the humanities. The best of these disciplines do already incorporate ethnic studies the philosophies and practices that these forms of knowledge bring. But absent this bill, we cannot expect the majority of Minnesota students to receive a holistic, uh, the holistic education uh, that ethnic studies provides. We cannot continue to leave it up to chance that a particular teacher will reach out, reach out to a parent or a community expert to invite them to their classroom to supplement their lack of content knowledge. Uh, as faculty at a post-secondary institution, it's been my experience that Minnesota students are not prepared to engage in ethnic studies curricula. Uh, we're forced to remediate our content to make up for the absence of ethnic studies 
uh, approaches in the state. And the passage of this graduation requirement will ensure that Minnesota students will be prepared at a very base level to engage with the surrounding world and not operate in a bubble. And so I encourage you to vote to pass the HF 1502. Thank you. Thank you. And in person, we have Ms. Jocelyn Navarro Cano. Hello. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for um, hearing, taking the moment to hear my testimony. Um, so, yeah, my name is Jocelyn Guadalupe uh, Navarro Cano, and I'm an ethnic studies teacher. Um, I was actually born and raised here in South Minneapolis, um, and I attended Minnesota schools all my life. Um, but I rarely ever saw myself in the curriculum. Um, when I attended my first year of college at the University of Minnesota, uh, I took my first uh, Chicano Latino history class. Um, opening the first like Latino history book um, for me felt like finally like I see myself, I exist, um, I have a place in this country. Um, and this actually led to my choice of becoming a teacher, um, specifically an ethnic studies teacher because I I uh, don't think students have to wait until college to find out about their histories, especially since the number of students attending higher, higher education is so low. Um, I believe that ethnic studies empower students to become active learners and citizens. Um, I've seen it in my own classrooms, the way that um, learning about themselves really changes students in a positive way. Um, I believe ethnic studies fosters understanding and empathy, which I believe will create a better world. Um, one of my first students was a student who was very difficult to engage. Um, I realized, though, that the topics that were actually engaging him were the ones that uh, told his story and helped him better understand his own story. Um, from there, the relationship with school for him really changed. Um, he really began to have this like, desire um, to learn and like further engage with um, the things that he was learning uh, or he was seeing in classes and um, learn like the different skills he needed to be able to really grasp the topics he was um, seeing in my classroom. Um, unfortunately, that student wasn't able to continue school because of his age, um, but ethnic studies did really change the student's rela relationship with learning and with himself. Um, he was like more motivated and open to growth because he saw himself um, and his story in a classroom. Um, now, the younger students in my classrooms are critically thinking and discussing social issues, and I'm watching how these, the students who are taking various ethnic studies classes engage um, with their studies in a much different way than the students who might just take one or no ethnic studies courses. Um, knowing and understanding their stories uh, really does change the way students are seeing school and the way that they're learning. Um, and with these classes, we can create, create significant changes in our schools Ethnic studies will give all, the stud all students the tools to be the leaders um, of the world that we want to see for our future. Um, so thank you. I hope you vote yes on the HF1502. Thank, thank you for testifying today. Thank you also for choosing your career in teaching. We really appreciate your leadership there. All right. Uh, we have uh, a public testifier that signed up, uh, Mr. Jeff Peterson. If you're here right now, can you move to the uh, stand and and proceed. And if you identify yourself again and proceed with your testimony. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Jeff Peterson. I'm a volunteer with the uh, Minnesota Chapter of FAIR, the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism. FAIR is dedicated to advancing civil rights for all Americans and promoting a common culture based on fairness, understanding, and humanity. Uh, we believe House File 1502 uh, does not uphold these objectives. Uh, we also believe that our uh, future depends on our ability to teach children nonpartisan habits and values necessary to the proper functioning of a liberal democracy. And this includes a fact-based, balanced, and honest account of our nation's history both its revolutionary founding, promise of freedom and equality, as well as the times we have failed to keep that promise. HF 1502 would have Minnesota schools teach a version of ethnic studies um, known as uh, liberated ethnic studies, and it is heavily focused on race, consciousness, and identity politics. Liberated ethnic studies is intent on alienating youth from our institutions, emphasizing victimization rather than agency and heightening awareness of group differences. This illiberal 
theory seeks to delegitimize ideas that the rest that rest at the core of our American identity, individual merit, tolerance, the rule of law, and compromise through reason discussion. This should concern Minnesotans of all backgrounds and political beliefs. In contrast, uh, we believe the vast majority of Minnesota parents favor an inclusive nonpartisan approach uh, to ethnic studies that broadens students' understanding of American history and important contributions made by people of all ethnic backgrounds. Inclusive ethnic studies avoids a zero-sum mindset and rejects the idea that society's main currency is power and privilege. Most significantly, it advances the constructive view that an individual's personal characteristics, such as character, personality, interests, and talents, uh, contribute substantially to their future success. Uh, so we're, let me just sum up that we are very concerned that 502 mandates adoption of a liberated partisan view of American history and contemporary issues, and we ask that you oppose the bill in favor of more inclusive and positive ways to honor heritage while maintaining a shared academic uh, culture. All right, having no more testifiers, um, we'll proceed with member discussion. You can return. Thank you. I call on uh, Chair Yuakin. Actually, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Miss, Mr. Peterson, could you come back up? My question is oh, actually to you. All right, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Madam you Chair. You have a question I, for the previous testifier. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I have questions for the previous testifier, too, and I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. I like when I hear from people what their credentials I'm are. I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing you. I, I want to just wrap my head around the testifiers that we've had, and I, I like to hear what our testifiers' credentials are. Do you have any academic credentials to, to look and review curriculum? Do I, do I have academic credentials? Yes. No, I'm speaking, I'm speaking as, on behalf of FAIR, and um, I'm not quite sure about the academic credentials associated with the organization. If you would be interested in more information about FAIR, we have a website, and I'd be happy to share that with you. Chair Yuki. Madam Chair, thank you. I did look at your website and it's sorely lacking for information, but maybe we can take that offline. Dr. Lozensky, I am so sorry. I was in the middle of something when you started to testify. Sure. Could you maybe go over a little bit of your academic credentials? Sure. Um, yes, I Dr. Have, Lozensky, excuse me. Yes. Okay. Please I have a bachelor's degree in um, operations research engineering and a double major in Africana Studies from Cornell University. And I have a master's degree in urban education from the University of Pennsylvania uh, and a doctorate from the University of Minnesota in culture and teaching. Um, and so ethnic studies education is in my purview of expertise. Thank you. Chair Yuakim. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you. So I assume that you are used to looking at curriculum and reviewing it and pedagogy and all that. And I should say andragogy because you actually teach adults too. So is that accurate? Y yes, my PhD is in curriculum and instruction. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Our follow-up with our testifiers? Yes, Representative Mueller. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you for Spencer, uh, Representative Spencer Merritt. Um, I just have a, a couple of, I have a couple of questions, and um, since we're so interested in credentials, my credentials is a master's in curriculum instruction with emphasis in literacy, and my doctor is in education leadership. So, um, I wanted to ask on, I know that I'm not, I'm looking at the amended version, but it yes. didn't look like this was removed from the actual version. So under the requirements for ethnic studies, I saw um, that this is gonna be required for K-12, but there isn't a requirement here for age appropriate standards. And so I wanted to know what um, the intentions are for when we do create these standards. What, um, and I didn't, I didn't see that also in the working group either. So I wanted to know if you would be open to having, making sure that we have age appropriate standards for that. Madam Chair? Representative Sensor. Yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, you know, so there is kind of a two pronged approach to, to the, I would say the ethnic studies kind of curriculum, you know, there um, was a social studies standard rulemaking. Um, and so ethnic studies is now one of the standards or one of the, why am I not thinking of the word strands? <laughs> um, and so within that, there are age appropriate from K-12, you know, standards. So thinking about how can you teach 
a kindergartner about identity, right? How can you start bringing some of that in in a very age appropriate way? Um, and so with the requirement to teach a K-12, you know, some sort of ethnic studies in K-12, it would be based on those standards, which I think are kind of, you know, um, lay the groundwork for that. I would also say that, you know, thinking about the age appropriateness, I think that's why we really want to have a working group that includes um, teachers who are K-5, teachers who are 6'8", who can really, you know, take some of the concepts and really think about how can how can we make sure this is age appropriate. But, um, you know, I think that that's um, a great concern. And if you would potentially be interested in adding, you know, language about age appropriateness, I would be willing to work with you on that. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the the other question I had, oh my goodness, and I should have written it down because it's going to like completely come off of my head, is, um, oh, I saw in here that we could substitute a language arts class, or we could substitute a social studies class, or we could substitute a science class, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know what that looked like because, like, so w being a teacher of almost 20 years, um, I definitely looked at my students, and I live in Austin, where the world has come to live in Austin. And so my classes, we used uh, novels that were representation of all of my students. And so we made sure that our students had the mirrors and windows as much as possible. Um, just want to know what that looks like in science, Adam Chair. We represent the sensor mirror. Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, and I think, again, trying to give as much flexibility to districts while knowing that maybe the majority of classes would fall into English or social studies. You know, I think that that was, I think this is really based actually on where ethnic studies is already being taught. You know, so I think that there's a way you could look at the history of medicine and thinking about how medicine has, you know, enfranchised certain groups or disenfranchised certain groups. I know that that was something that was um, brought up. Um, I know that. I don't know if there's a member um, of the Academic Studies Coalition that might be better able to speak to that, um, but I could also provide you later with more information about how that could embed into a science class. Thank you. And then final question, yes. Madam Chair. Oh, thank you so much. And, and a final, I appreciate final, final question. question. Yep, thank yes. you so much. Uh, Representative Bueller. Oh, just, I think, um, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Lisinski. <laughs> Dr. Lisinski. I know how that goes. I could give response? a brief response to um, the emphasis on STEM and ethnic studies. Um, so e ethnic studies approaches STEM um, as not simply like a, a technical approach, but also a, a cultural practice. So that culture also mediates how we engage in scientific exploration, even how we engage in mathematical thinking. So there's a field called ethnomathematics that actually looks at um, how different cultural groups from around the world approach mathematics um, through distinct lenses, right? And so thinking about like why did algebra get invented um, in, you know, in the 15th century in Islam, right, in, in the Middle East, right? Why did the Chinese invent the concept of zero, right? These are kind of like ethno-mathematic -math, ethno principles um, that uh, folks would engage in through an ethnic studies lens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do appreciate it. Um, so then my final question is, you know, this, this bill has a lot of pretty heavy-handed mandates to our, to our, our districts. My qu question is, and I've received already several emails from school board members that ask us a lot to, to protect their ability to see what is offered in their school. What is preventing a school district from offering ethnic studies? I did hear in your testimony that 30 districts across the state already offer ethnic studies course and that we have um, schools that are already implementing these ethnic study classes. So I just, I just don't understand why we have to create a, a state down mandate when if people are finding value in this, and I know that in Austin we are looking at how we can best represent our students as they come from all over the world. I mean. If a person came to our school board and, and requested this, I'm sure that my school board would be pretty responsive to this. What is preventing a local school district from doing this already? Yeah, thank you. Representative Sensenbjörn. Yes, thank you for that question. Um, you know, I think I would answer that by saying nothing 
right? And like in terms of law or statute, nothing is preventing a school district from doing it right now. And, and like you mentioned, you know, over 30 school districts across the state, not just in the metro, do have ethnic studies courses. You know, um, I think what happens a lot in the legislature is, you know, we see something that's working in a certain place and we see something that would benefit all students. And we want to give the resources to make sure that all students have access to it, right? And so, um, we'll talk about this more at our next stop at education finance, but you know, this bill does come with resources, right? To make sure that school districts are able to implement it, to make sure that teachers have the training, to make sure that there's the curriculum, to make sure that the state can really support this initiative. Um, and so I really see this as just, you know, we are mandating, right? Because I would say that our job as legislature, legislators on this committee is not to protect school boards, it's to protect students. And we have young people who are telling us that I don't see myself in school and I'm disengaging and we know that that has devastating consequences. And so we can protect students by ensuring that they have access to this curriculum. But we can also ensure that you know school districts and teachers are set up for success. I don't wanna put in a mandate where people cannot be successful. And so that's why there are resources um, that are coming with this along with flexibility because we know that districts need to implement things in different ways and districts right now have different resources to do so. So thank you for that question. Representative Bakeberg. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Spencer Murra, uh, for bringing this. Um, I, I love how you said that, that we have an idea. Uh, we hear about something really great happening across the state, and then uh, we want to implement that everywhere across the state. Um, whereas my really good idea, uh, maybe my perspective, it's a good idea. Representative Knudsen is going to see that as a mandate statewide. So there, uh, I, I hear what you're saying on that, but um, many of our ideas that we come up with, uh, they end up being mandates on, on local school districts. And, and I appreciate the perspective of protecting students. If we had an honest conversation that everything was grounded in what's best for students, um, we would be much better at the table. But uh, the reality of it is there's lots of factors that play into the decisions that we make. Uh, but I want to start out by just saying that, that diversity makes us stronger. Uh, Rep Keeler had a great bill last week that we talked about. And, and diversity makes us stronger. Learning different perspectives makes each of us just simply at a basic level better human beings. Uh, Dr. Lazinski, all right. Um, you talked about different lenses. Um, to be honest, there are... Uh, there are different people, when we talk about ethnic studies, their lens is going to be very different than your lens. Um, so I think we have to recognize that. Students across the state are asking for this. Uh, I would say that local school districts across the state are already doing this, and they don't need us to mandate it. Um, these courses are, are rigorous, and they're developed at the local level. And, and I think we should be enacting policies that continue to empower our local school districts. Uh, one of the things I appreciate the inclusion of, of administrators. I would just echo that I, I think a school board member needs to be a part of that uh, as well in, in the working, uh, the ethnic studies working group. But I still have concerns about a working group developing mandates that are um, developed from one perspective of ethnic studies uh, for the entire state, and thus that eliminates local control, and I will always have concerns with that. So thank you. I'm going to go to the next member discussion, um, and we will give you the, the final words, uh, Representative Sensor Muir. Thank you. Uh, Representative Burke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to share my credentials, they are uh, an election certificate. Um, my own intentional journey uh, on white supremacy, implicit bias, and how to be an ally, and nearly 50 years of life experience. Um, I would like to thank the author for bringing this bill forward. And I just want to address the piece around age-appropriate curriculum. Um, it's never not age appropriate to open up the minds of our students towards the beautiful diversity that they see in their classrooms and communities. That is always going to be age appropriate all the way up to past me and on. And getting our students to learn and to um, experience 
uh, the, the beauty of their classmates is preventative for some of the issues that we talk about in terms of racism later on. There is no victim mentality here, right? This is an opportunity to provide our students with something that they may become passionate about. What we do in the classroom is teach our students different things that they will carry with them through life and maybe become a Dr. <laughs> uh, Luzinski, sorry, um, right? And so to prohibit our students from being able to experience and learn that and develop a passion would be sad indeed. So thank you so much uh, for bringing this bill forward. Representative Bennett. Thank you, Madam Chair and, and members, and good discussion. Um, I guess I want to hit on two issues, and I'm not going to ask a question if I could just make a couple comments. Um, first of all, local control is incredibly important. Good ideas are important, too, and that's why we have local control. For example, Minneapolis has come up with a great ethnic studies program, from what I understand, and that's starting to spread. And it will spread to the areas that, that need it and want it. Somebody else might come up, another area in our state might come up with an even better ethnic studies plan. So that's why taking away local control, I think, is huge here. Not to mention, I think I counted, and there might be more, six musts for our schools just in this bill alone. And it puts an incredible burden upon our schools that are already charged with teaching you know, reading, math, science, social studies, phi ed, I could go on and on. And now this actually adds a, an entire new category um, that is outside of, it's, it's separate and it's, and it's going to burden our schools and it's going to take away from the core functions. And I'll just switch to my second topic and that's literacy. Literacy is key to learning. It is key to success. It is a key to our achievement gaps. It is key to understanding each other. And I will, I'm going to agree right now that the study of cultures and ethnicities is incredibly important. We're all neighbors. We're neighbors in our own communities in Austin, Albert Lee, um, metro, rural, the whole state, our whole nation, our whole world. We need to understand each other because that helps us get along. But this, this goes too far in the mandating. Let's lead by showing how instead of mandate. I don't see the focus on literacy here, the science of reading. That's incredibly important. We're eating around edges and, and talking about menstrual products and, and providing lunches for wealthy family students and all those kinds of things. But literacy, that's the success for life. And I don't see it here not to take away from the importance of culture. So I just, I do have a lot of problems with this because of all the mandates and, and the lack of addressing literacy. So thank you. Closing comments, Represent Senator Mira. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you for the rich discussion today. Thank you so much to, to the testifiers that really I think are add, able to add richness and depth. You know, I think where many, many of you are saying that you see a mandate, I really see that we're ensuring that all students have access to this and we're meeting every single young person where they are at. I know from my own experience as a student, I felt like if you don't see me, if you don't see my history, if you don't see my culture, then, then I can't learn from you, right? And I think, you know, I've had discussions with teachers, right, who say that I, I live in an area, I went from one year having a totally white classroom, right, to having a classroom with 30 Somali students and I, I didn't know what I should be teaching, right? I didn't know what I should be teaching to both like make sure that those students were represented in the curriculum, but also so that the students around them were able to interact and to know that history as well. Um, so, you know, I would just say that we heard um, from our student testifier, we heard from Dr. Lazinski that, you know, I think right now schools are trying, right? But it's February 28th, it's the last day of Black History Month, and you know, <laughs> Dr. Lazinski was asked to come in and I don't know the scheduling, but potentially do like a last minute lesson, right, on black history. And you know, that's the experience that I see in schools. That's the experience I had, right, as a Japanese American student to say, we have a culture day, right? Please bring in a dish from your history. Um, and I think that that's the failures that we've kind of seen of just having an approach that says, leave it up to the schools, they'll be able to incorporate it. This bill is helping schools have the tool to actually, in a real authentic way, incorporate this education that we know our young people need to be successful. Um, 
So I look forward to continued conversations. You know, I, I appreciate the insight. Um, and, you know, I ask that you move this bill forward to education finance. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And with that, uh, Representative Frazier renews his motion to re-refer House File 1502 as amended to the Education Finance Committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The motion carries, and the bill does move to House um, to Education Finance. Thank you.